Welcome to the Hey Legal Quiz with me, Edith Forrest. The aim of this quiz is to provide some light-hearted entertainment during lockdown and beyond. I'll be asking 20 questions of leading Scottish legal figures, questions which give insight to their careers and their lives beyond the law. So let's begin. So I'm joined today with by Ian Duguid QC. Hello, Ian. How are you doing? Good to see you. You too. How are you? I'm pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Right. We'll just get started with the quiz. I can see you're nervous. You're desperate. You're nervous, are you? <laughs> no. <laughs> Nothing to Nothing say. I know you're going to say that. <laughs> okay. Right. We'll start with our first question. If you weren't a lawyer, Ian, what would you be? A journalist. Okay. I sort of narrowly miss being a journalist. How when I did you? law, I, got, I did law and I started off in the solicitor's office and I got sick of it. I thought, I can't do this anymore. So I applied for a job in journalism because I used to write for a sports newspaper, the Evening News in Edinburgh, covered minor football games. So I was about to go for an interview um, with the BBC as a sub-editor of some obscure news program. Really? Yeah. <laughs> How long had you lasted in the, in the lawyer's office before you realised that you were scunnered with it? Um, about 18 months. Right. Maybe not as long as that. And I, had to, I had to do like a traineeship and then they took me on and I just I had to sort of do conveyancing and I had a fancy idea about making the lawyer's office into an estate agency as well, which was just happening at the time. And then they kind of said, no, no, we're not doing that. We're too traditional. So I thought, since I've had enough, uh-huh. I don't even like being a lawyer. I was wondering what the heck I was doing. Really? So yeah. what, how, what, what happened that you stayed and remained being a lawyer? Oh, my dad said, why don't you go and try court law? And see what you think about that. And I thought, yeah, I'll give it a go. And the rest so is I was a procurator fiscal in Aberdeen. Right. <laughs> that was how I started. Okay. Doing court work. Yeah. And you obviously then the journalist dream just disappeared. He, no, the jur- yeah, kind of like disappeared. I still sort of harbored dreams of being a journalist, but then... I just, uh, I left being a procurator fiscal and I went to Hong Kong and that kind of changed everything. Okay. And you prosecuted out there, didn't you? I did, yeah, for the Attorney General. Yeah. Yeah, for six years. I was out in Hong Kong for six years. Okay. Amazing. So that was good. Good stuff. (laughs) All right. Um, Question number two, Ian, did you have a nickname at school? And if so, what was it and why were you given it? Okay, so you gave me your question and I was thinking, I can't even remember having a nickname at school. Maybe Specky or something like that. Because I, I, from a young age, I was badly long-sighted. So I used to have quite thick national health glasses. Oh, did you? Just, they used to get broken in the school playground playing football like endlessly. So maybe that, but... For most of my life, I've been known as Dukes. Okay. So, yeah. So now I'm Dukes Senior because my son is Dukes and then my other son is called Dukes Junior. <laughs> so we're all called Dukes. Okay. All right. Question three. Were you a swatty type at school? Uh, no. Not really swatty. I was, like, too interested in playing sport, although... I wore glasses, so probably people would think I was sorty, but no. No. Did you work? Did you have to work hard at school, or are you not naturally gifted? <laughs> I'd love to say I'm just naturally gifted. Probably I had to work just at the end of school to try and make sure I got to university or something. But no, I was not really that sorty. No. Okay, because I always, I think I asked, you, your um, jury speeches you rarely use notes for, and I remember asking you, like, how do you remember that? Does it just come, I, I had a, I imagined that you just were able to just, you know, get up there and deliver the speech, and it was all, um, you know, all 
came to you very easily, but you told me that, no, you actually work hard on it. But I think it's good to have, give that perception that, um, you know, things are all very easy. Natural. To yeah. Yeah. No, I do, quite, I would do work quite hard in sort of structuring jury speeches. As you will know, I just come away with some lines that I just think of on the spot. So I kind of like prepare a structure for a speech, but just in my head, I've got tried to get in my head most of the facts that uh, I need to know. But sometimes I just come away with some stuff that when I read in the charged in the sort of uh, transcripts, I think, oh, my God, did I really say that? <laughs> but, Oh, yeah. well, it impressed me, Ian, and you, I, I think it was a particular case where you were giving all sorts of statistics, and I was thinking, how on earth is he remembering that? Um, <laughs> um, all right, question four, what was your first job? I was a greenkeeper on a golf course. Okay. Yeah, that was my first job. What age were you when you started that? Just left school, so I was 17, I think. Okay. Yeah. And I did it when I was at university because it was like working in the outdoors through the summer. And uh, yeah, it was very good fun. Yeah. Really enjoyed it. Met a few really interesting characters. So uh, yeah, some very funny stories that went on. Any you would <laughs> like to share? Um, well, I remember a guy that I worked with um, lived in a kind of like public housing estate in Edinburgh and he said, why so you come round and have dinner with my family and uh, on a Sunday. So I went round to his house and he gave me the address and I went up to his house, which was a main door house in a sort of pretty scabby apartment. And there was no front door. It was just all plastic strips. So well, the house front door had been removed because there had been the miner strike and they needed to burn stuff. So they'd taken off the front door and basically chopped up the wood to the front door. And we're waiting for the council to give them a new front door. In the meantime, they just had plastic strips for a front door. Good. It was did, pretty did you get a reasonable lunch from them? Yeah, it was dinner. Yeah, it was really good. <laughs> yeah. Basic, but good. <laughs> oh, dear. Um, all right. Question number five is, how do you define success? Oh, it's just quite a difficult thing when I was thinking about how the heck am I going to answer that but I think probably if you just achieve everything you set out to achieve then that'll be success in your own mind um yeah that's about all I can <laughs> think of <laughs> okay I'm not sure if I've achieved success yet but because maybe I haven't achieved everything I set out to do but who knows we'll see you've done all right Ian I think so far <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, well. Um, question number six is your favourite drink? Um, probably Bacardi and Coke or Jack Daniels and Coke. Okay. Just, I don't know why. I always end up drinking it at the end of the night because uh, usually when I drink a lot of it, I just don't end up with a hangover. It's right. probably the Coke in it, so it's got nothing to do with the rum or the Jack Daniels, but yeah. So I always regard Coke as like straighten you out at some point in time. The healthy option. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure it's not like that, but um, yeah, it works for me. All right. Okay. Um, question number seven is what don't you like about your job? Um, I, I don't like working late at night to prepare for the next day when you've sort of been occupied the entire day and you come home and you have a bit of rest and then you got to start working again and yeah. I don't really like doing that but it's a necessary part of the job as I'm sure you know so um and grumpy people okay <laughs> I don't really like that but uh otherwise I'm it's fine. I love the job, so, yeah. Okay, good stuff. Um, question number eight, which is your most memorable case to date? Wow, so the case is from, the case is actually, I think, from 
Well, obviously, the most memorable case is the last one I did with you, <laughs> which I think was really the most memorable case, obviously, which had such a successful outcome, as you know. But, uh, and then I was thinking, so I've done the one that was on the television recently, the Margaret Fleming thing. That was pretty interesting. And the World's End murder was Angus Sinclair. That was pretty interesting. But my choice of case is actually a case which happened in 1983. Okay. And I was the Crown Junior Counsel. And I was prosecuting myself and the Director of Public Prosecutions were prosecuting a serial killer, the first serial killer in Hong Kong's history. And he's called Lam Kor Wan. And so the case became known as the Jars Murders because he uh, killed the women in his taxi, which he was driving, took them back to his flat and, and started, well, did some terrible things that are unmentionable even in this uh, recording. But then he cut out their sexual organs and put them in um, Tupperware um, containers with formaldehyde. Right. <laughs> And it was so just appalling, but... Um, and what kept them at home? He actually got caught by putting in the... Um, he took photographs of the contents of the Tupperware jars and sent them in for enlargement at a photo company just at the end of Kowloon near the Star Ferry in Hong Kong. And he got caught when somebody in the shop was starting looking through them and discovered that they were all women's sexual organs in jars or formaldehyde. So um, that case has been, <laughs> there's two films um, have been made about the case. One is called Dr. Lamb, which was made in the 1990s. And then there's another, which is a fictional version of it. Um, so yeah, that was in 1983. Um, and that was pretty interesting because I'd only arrived in Hong Kong in 1982. Mm. So um, to get involved in that case with the DPP was um, really quite something. I, I, was he convicted? He was. Yeah. He got sent to death by hanging. Did he, right? He did. It was commuted by the governor to life imprisonment the next year. Right. And I just... I was just looking at it on Wikipedia because it's on Wikipedia, the whole story about it in the films, and he's seemingly still alive. I see. Wow. In a prison in Hong Kong, yeah. Wow. So, how so do you victims do you want to read about it and get onto Wikipedia? Yeah, I will do, definitely. Um, how many victims did he have? Four. Four of them. Oh, it's Four women that came back of his taxi. Yeah. It was pretty interesting at the time. It was about a year after um, the Yorkshire Ripper case. So in preparation for the case, we got the entire transcript of the Yorkshire Ripper trial to read. Right. Because the theory was he was a serial killer like the Yorkshire Ripper and yeah. he was defending it on the basis that he was not of sound mind. Mm -hmm. So it was pretty uh, case. Wow. Absolutely. There you go. Um, all right, question number... You didn't expect that one, maybe. What was that? You didn't expect that one, maybe? No, I didn't. I didn't. I thought, um, I, I don't know what I thought, but that, I think you, I think perhaps, I was going to say you top the, the bill for the most interesting case, but you certainly top it for a case out with this jurisdiction anyway. Yeah. 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 Um, question number nine is, tell me one thing that would surprise me about you. Uh, can't really think of anything. <laughs> I can't ski, okay. and I can't water ski, and I don't think I could ride a horse, not a race horse. Well, other than that, I'd try any sport you could think of, but <laughs> I don't know. Can't think of anything about me that no. would be. Yeah, I don't know that anything you said would surprise me anyway. <laughs> um, maybe. <laughs> okay, that's, that's maybe a good thing. <laughs> um, question uh, number 10. What traits and others irritate you the most? Uh, impatience 
and self-interest, jealousy. Okay. Is there more? <laughs> That's it. <laughs> okay. I started a question. I was thinking, okay, what well, what can I think of? Mm. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Um, question eleven. Your favourite flavour of crisps? Uh, S and V's. S and V's. Good choice. Yeah. Just the kids have always loved salt and vinegar, and I've just picked up their bad habits. Right. So. I'm partial to some tomato sauce flavored crisps, maybe. Okay. But that's about it. All right. Okay. Question 12. What book would you recommend everyone should read? Um, okay. So, uh, the, my favorite book is probably Captain Corelli's Mandolin. Okay. I was trying to, because you, you would know yourself that. When you're reading all the time, you hardly get a chance to read any books. And then every time I go on holiday, I don't read a single thing for the first three or four days because I just can't bring myself to read anything. And then I start a book and then I quite like it. So I, Captain Corelli's Mandolin is a great one. And then if I was on, I read a fantastic book on holiday, although maybe it's not quite as good as I remember it. It was called Into the Darkest Corner. Okay. If anybody can find that book, um, it's quite uh, it's quite a good read for a holiday. Okay. So try that one. All right. Into the darkest corner. Can't remember who the author is, but yeah. Is it a thriller or a? Kind of. It's like yeah, it's a thriller. It's about a girl who gets well. I would, who gets gets in a relationship and then it's not quite the way she thinks it is. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, question number thirteen is: Do you have any irrational fears? No. You fearless. <laughs> irrational fears. Um. No. No. I can't think of any. Okay. Fair enough. I think. Most people say that if, if you're fearful of something, um, then to you it's not irrational. But are you, are you scared of anything or? Uh, jumping out of a plane maybe. Okay. But it's something I really want to do. So <laughs> I really want to uh, jump out of the plane and everybody in my family is dead against it. <laughs> and. Um, which kind of makes me think I'm dead for it. So I've got to, I've got to, I've got to do it. <laughs> One time Tony Lenahan suggested we go potholing down through the root of a tree somewhere. Uh -huh. Came out on a beach and he just made a, he just, I was thinking, oh God, I don't think I'd do that. And then I thought, oh, maybe I would. And then. You haven't succumbed to it. Me would allow me to do that either. I've been fishing with Tony Lenehan and gone over the edge of a cliff on the flimsiest of rope ladders or single rung ladders. So, yeah. I've heard about these, I've heard tales of his potholing and it sounds pretty extreme. I know. He'd be an interesting character for you to <laughs> interview on this. Well, we, you know, I might take you up on that. We might say uh, yeah. he's prepared. Um, an extra nomination, Ian. We'll bear that in mm. mind. <laughs> yeah, well. Okay. Um, question number 14 is, how old are your oldest pair of shoes? Oh. Four years, maybe? Okay. They're a pair of trainers, though. Right. Do you just ditch them once they're finished? Oh, can I, when I've kind of worn out my trainers from doing whatever I do in trainers, then I just stick them in the cupboard and use them for gardening. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then, because I wear trainers around the house all the time, so, yeah, I, just, I, I don't like dressing gowns and slippers. <laughs> I reckon that's just the sign of an old man, so I refuse to have a dressing gown and I don't have slippers and I would never have them, so I just wear trainers around the house. Okay. But then they get old and smelly. <laughs> but I'm four years old for the smelliest and oldest pair of trainers. Okay, 
fair enough. <laughs> Oh, you wouldn't you wouldn't consider a dressing gown trainers combination? No. Just dressing gowns is not for me. <laughs> <laughs> a onesie? No. Uh, no, unless it was an emu suit, of course. Well, quite. I'm sure you could get something like that you know, to sit up in the evening with your legs in tights with a big emu uh, feet at the end. Yeah, as you know. I know. Well, just for the viewers, um, it was a was it a stable dinner we had or a do we had, and you turned up with, with an emu suit. And we all wanted a shot of it. <laughs> I can't remember that, but I remember well, I got an emu suit for about my fiftieth birthday. I just was on the internet one night, and I just thought, yeah, I should get one of them. So I did, <laughs> and then I wore it to my what was it fiftieth birthday party. And just everybody wanted to go of it, and every time I get it out, it's just yeah. crazy. It's fabulous. I've got the pictures to, sh to prove it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well. Moving on. Um, mm -hmm. Question number 15 is, who's had the biggest influence on your career in law? Okay, so there's three, three people. My dad, who was a, a lawyer of, of sorts. He was a lawyer in local government. So he was the one who told me to go and try court law when I thought I've had enough of this. So he would be one. Then there was a guy called uh, Joe Duffy who started life as a Dundee solicitor, but he was the DPP in Hong Kong when I arrived there. Mm. And so he was the guy who kind of like gave me my biggest break maybe and then there was another guy who was a book author but happened to be an assistant attorney general in Hong Kong a guy called Gary Alderdice who was a New Zealander and he was just like a quite an inspirational um, lawyer who kind of like set me on the path and then the last one would be Edgar Praise because when I came back and I saw Edgar in the high court I just thought I want to be like that guy. Mm -hmm. I have big red glasses and a huge loud voice. <laughs> and just, yeah, he was brilliant. I thought he was brilliant. Absolutely. So. Yeah. He was one of my choices as well. And he, he seems to feature in this quiz quite a bit. I <laughs> yeah, he does. yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Question number 16. Um, Favourite chocolate bar? Uh, anything Cadbury, so... A Cadbury's Boost. All right. It's just so, so the centre of it is just so sweet and sugary. It's just like, if ever you need a bit of energy, just uh -huh. get a boost. I buy it. I suppose driving back to Edinburgh from Glasgow, if I stop at Hart Hill, then I'd definitely buy a boost. Okay. <laughs> there you go. Question number 17. What is the fanciest event you've ever been to? I've never really been to any fancy events, but um, when I was in Hong Kong, I played in the Hong Kong Sevens. So, and in 1984, I was like the captain of the Hong Kong team when we played the New Zealand All Blacks. <laughs> the captain of the New Zealand All Blacks was the guy who just lifted the World Cup. And uh, so there was a whole lot of stuff went on just before and after that game, which was one of many games, but playing in front of about 35,000 people and uh, just everything that went along with it was pretty exciting. So, Great. yeah, that was kind of like, I wouldn't call it a grand event, but for just a, just a guy who was a lawyer just playing sport in my spare time, it was quite a, an amazing experience, so. Okay, yeah. absolutely. I was just thinking about the case I was telling about, the Hong Kong case, which I think finished in April 1983, and in March 1983, just on the, it's about the end of March, I was playing in the Hong Kong Sevens. So I was playing in the Sevens in about the week before the closing arguments in the court case. And I just remember thinking, when this is all over, I'm going to get a massive drink. That's when the rugby finished. But when the rugby finished, I couldn't really have a massive drink. 
because that was on the Sunday and I had to go back to the court on Monday. So it was just, I had a massive drink when the case finished. <laughs> Sounded like you needed it. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, question number 18, Ian, is what quirks do you have? Oh, I don't know what quirks I have. I don't know. You could probably answer the question. What quirks do I have? You quite often just burst out laughing. <laughs> In response to um, questions, uh, even quite serious questions. But it's endearing. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know what quirks I have. <laughs> All right, I think that's true. I probably have some, but I can't really spot them. Yeah. Oh, I'll tell you, this. When, it's, I, when I'm cross-examining a witness, every time, if you read back transcripts, the number of times I start a question with, so. <laughs> yeah. What? What's all that about? But, so I, I've tried to stop doing that. Yeah, I don't think it's a distracting habit. Um, but you're right, I've noticed that, yeah. Things like that are just to buy yourself some time, aren't they? Yeah, and absolutely. You're right, yeah, nothing wrong with yeah. that. Um, question 19, what is the best piece of advice you've ever been given? Um, to never feel sorry for yourself. Okay. <laughs> That's it, okay. Who, who gave you that advice? My mum. Mm -hmm. And has that stood you in good stead in life? Yep. Yeah. Just get on and do what you want to do. Yeah. If you're, yeah. Absolutely. You can't be um, in a pit. Once you start going down that route, it's uh, very difficult to get out. Yeah, I know. But, I mean, everybody has things that depress them. But yeah. um, if you can just give yourself a good telling, telling off, hmm. you should be fine. Okay. Yeah. Uh, that's good advice. Um, question number 20, what job would you be terrible at? Being a pianist in an orchestra. <laughs> Why? You're a good pianist. No, as you can probably see, uh -huh. the piano. And I've been learning some new tunes during the lockdown, but I'm just terrible at it. I mean, I just play, and it sounds okay for my mates, but... Um, Could you give us a quick tune? Sorry? Could you give us a quick tune? Go on. Yeah. You serious? See if you can recognise the tune. Okay. I know you're going to say I didn't even recognize it. Only because I don't think I know the tune, but what was <laughs> <laughs> It was like Angels by Robbie Williams. Okay. To be fair, Ian, the... You're going to have to listen back to try and work out the, the, the sound, that's what it really is. The, 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 I don't think your microphone liked this piano playing because it wasn't really transparent. <laughs> but it sounded good. I mean, it was that sounded impressive. No. And the piano needs tuning as well. Well... I'm impressed with that, but I've heard you're going to be embarrassing, isn't it? Not at all. I am. Um, you're a very good pianist. So why, why would you not be good playing in an orchestra? Because I'm. I can play the piano when I'm playing on my own. But if other people are playing musical instruments around me, I'd be shocking. Really? Yeah. Is that a guitar? It has I happened in well? the past. <laughs> Sorry, I just said, is that a guitar? I can see as well. <laughs> Yeah, and a trumpet. <laughs> You're going to have to give us a blast on one of those. <laughs> There's a few things I'm uh, obviously trying to master when I'm <laughs> just not doing anything, but... Oh, no. No, 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 no. no. That's, it's too much, too much. 
the guitar? Um, that's just for my mates when they come around. I can't play the guitar, but I bought a guitar so that they could oh, play when they come around. Oh, well, that was very brave, Ian. That was impressive. I'm impressed with your piano playing. Um, as I have been on many a, 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 many a faculty dinner when we've managed to get our hands on it. <laughs> I think we were told to step away from the, the grand piano ones at Parliament Hall at a dinner. Um, we were. Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> to stop playing. <laughs> <laughs> Not to worry. Well, thank you very much. That, that, is, uh, that was really good. Um, and I'm sure the, other, the audience will recognise that. Um, it was just something with the... <laughs> um, okay, question 21. What is the weirdest talent you have? Um, t the only thing I can think of is uh, juggling a golf ball on a golf club. Okay. Endlessly. Right. That's, I can't think of any other um, weird talent I've got. Okay. I'll not ask you to do that in case your wife <laughs> gets mad, in case you break something in there. Yeah. Usually I can keep it under control though. Okay. That's impressive. That is impressive. And you say that, but it's not really. <laughs> <laughs> We've come to the last question, Ian, which is, what have you enjoyed most about lockdown? Um, so the thing I've probably uh, uh, just enjoyed doing nothing. <laughs> okay. And uh, realising that um, retirement, when it comes, won't be so scary. Okay. I think it can probably handle just um, not working. When I previously thought, oh, I'd be quite scared to give up working. Because mm. what the hell would I do? But um, yeah, I think I can probably manage it fine. Been a nice taster for it. Yeah, it's been a good practice. Although things are sort of um, starting to go again. So as you will know. Yeah. Um, and... I just feel like sometimes, um, can I really bring myself to <laughs> sort of start cranking it up to the level we were at before lockdown? But yeah, sure, I'll, um, it, isn't it? sure I'll get there. I was obviously dressed like this. I was in court this morning, and I think because it's yeah, I wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've been dressing like this through lockdown in the hope that uh, the work will will begin again. Um, but yeah, and. I think it's just so all-consuming. You know, our job is not kind of dipping in, doing the odd But I mean, you have the odd day where you, you know, you get away a early or whatever. But if you do that, there's always something else to do, isn't there? It's just... Yeah, ridiculous. yeah. It's not a job you can dip in and out of as far as I can see. No. You can't sort of wind down, do 50% of what you were doing before. It just doesn't work like that. No. It's all or nothing really, isn't it? Well, Ian, thank yep. you so much. Um, you've been no a fantastic guest. You've done really well. I've been really impressed. <laughs> and I've been quite surprised as well by your uh, answers. And you're the only person today who has been brave enough to place a musical instrument. And is, what is that you're drinking? Um, it's just soda water and lime. <laughs> I just didn't think I could... I know you sent me an email saying you can start drinking now because we're a bit late. And I thought, no, I really can't. The answers are bad enough without blaming drink. Not at all. And I'm sure people will really enjoy this quiz uh, and watching it. <laughs> Absolutely. It's been a pleasure. Great to see you again. Oh, you too. So Ian, before I let you go, I wonder if you might uh, nominate someone else to take the quiz. Yeah, definitely. I'd like to nominate Danny Scullion. Um, recently retired as a sheriff in Glasgow. Um, I'm sure he would be a fantastic guest for your quiz, especially if you can ask him about a story when he was traveling from Perth to Glasgow with Ali McCoist. Um, <laughs> I'm sure he'd be willing to tell you the story. Okay. <laughs> but, uh, yep. Danny's going, all right, that sounds intriguing, and I'll be sure to ask that, get that woven into his questions. <laughs> But again, thank you so much. You've been a brilliant guest and um, I hope to see you soon. Uh, yeah, you. great to see you, Edith. Okay, and thank you so much. Bye. Bye for now. I hope you enjoyed this episode of the Hey Legal Quiz. Hey Legal Quiz.
month we are releasing more episodes weekly, so please sign up for free to Hey Legal on our website to access our free content, legal updates and more. Plus follow us on Twitter, YouTube, Instagram and on all podcasting platforms. 